In this tutorial, we'll just take a look at a couple more options available for controlling these armatures. And recall in this case, we were just controlling both of these with this one IK constraint, like this. And now the first thing we'll look at is I've gone in and I've modified this object a little bit and I've kind of extruded it out sideways so I can, can tell which way it's pointing. But of course I can see the bones as well. So the one thing we'll do is we'll take the this particular control bone and we'll add a target to it. So up here I have in the scene, let me move go full screen here so you can see it. I have a little green cube over here like this in the scene. All right, And I'm going to make that a pull target for this constraint. I mean for this bone back here. So if I go over here, here's the pole target and I'm going to make that it's called the cube target is the name of this object right here. And by putting it in there, wh when I move this target, say left or right, just take notice of the shape, the object itself and then the bones themselves. All right. So as I'm moving it, notice how the object rotates and the bones themselves rotate. All right. So but when you add the target to the scene, what doesn't happen, you lose control of this uh, bending within the bone because now it's focused on that in this sense. And this, if I grab this and move this here, now you see the control, it's, it's twist, it's spinning, and the bones are s spinning within that armature, but the, the armature doesn't bend now because of the pull target. All right, that's one thing to look at, and then maybe you need you know, maybe you have a reason for using that, you know. Of course, what you could do in that case, you could, if you needed a curved object, you could start with curved armature and then be rotating as you go. So that's one possibility. I'm just kind of giving you options because the combination of possibilities becomes endless and, and then it just comes down to what you're trying to do. So maybe someday down the road you're trying to build sci-fi creatures fighting against each other and maybe you, you know you're looking for a way to move them certain ways maybe the pole targets the one you need okay so let me get rid of this uh, first I'll get rid of it in here all right so I'll get rid of the pole target for there and I don't need that well I'll leave it in it doesn't matter all right and the other thing we're going to do is remember a couple lessons back we were using two individual IK constraints on one armature and that gave us some control so we'll kind of do the same thing but we're just going to repractice adding an empty let's see let's get rid of that I had I was experimenting over here so now but here let's let's go use that other remember the empty tar the empty IK that we can use based on the manual says control I but if I press control I right here it selects the inverse of the bones. If I was in object edit mode, it would select the inverse of, inverse of the vertices or the faces that I had selected. So control I doesn't make sense in the manual. I'm sure they meant shift I. You press shift I and I'm just going to add IK to an empty object. And it, it just adds that empty to the scene. So it's basically like having this control bone here as your IK for your IK control, but in this case it just adds this empty as the IK control. And if I click it, if I, well if I just, actually if I stay in here, you notice it has the empty and it has a pull target, but it doesn't give you the option of adding a bone, because you don't need it. It basically, the this works kind of like the bone that you're looking at. And then when you're, and notice when I click the empty, it just shows as the empty object and I'm out, I'm not even part of the armature anymore. Whereas if I click this one over here, I, that bone is part of that armature. So it's just another way they do it. But when I have it on here, then I'm controlling this part of it back here or this way. So, you know, that affects this part of the armature. But of course, that's going to also affect what happens when I control this. Now that's kind of fixed in place because of the location of the empty here. And now when I just press G here, see that one there, if I stretch it all the way out, see it doesn't, it doesn't allow the, uh, it doesn't allow this one, this constraint, even if I set it back to zero, which we know is all the way to zero, back to there, it's not controlling it back to there because of that empty that's basically what well, is con well no it is actually is controlling it there no it is okay so it does it kind of work so it works just like the if you have multiple 
I'll control both multiple I K constraints on the same bone. So I just have to move it. It's so this this one here is as long as it's, as it's in front of this bone, then this empty will control those back there. So if I'll move that up, so from there back, this will work just fine. Oops, get the wrong one. G. So that's controlling it to there, right? But all the way back to there. And then this empty can, and that empty can still control that back to there. So it's just like having multiple IK bones, except you're just having an empty instead of that in there. I'm not sure the reasoning for it yet, but um, I'm sure there's a good reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.